Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'll be presenting uh, our work on the dynamics of multidimensional uh, chronic poverty that we, we did with Rocio Garcia Diaz from the Tech of Monterrey in, in Mexico. Um, okay, just as a motivation, it, it has been vastly mentioned in the literature about the importance to distinguish between transient and chronic poor because uh, as we know, the poli uh, public policies needed to tackle each one of them are, can, be, can be different. Now, more specifically, specifically for the chronic poor, uh, the longer per a person spends in, in poverty, uh, the harder it is for that person to go out from poverty. So uh, assistance, and the greater the need for assistance. And so we, we know that uh, chronic poverty is important. Um, now, among, uh, since the theoretical work of Sen and since the a proposal of Elkiri and Foster, among practitioners, uh, there has been a tendency to, to approach poverty as a multidimensional um, phenomenon. And although this is true, this, this, tendency is, this trend is also true for chronic poverty, it, to, to tackle chronic poverty as a multidimensional phenomenon, it's in its early stages. So that's one of the things that we want to do here. And, and okay. So talking a little bit about uh, the literature and how to include time on poverty, uh, broadly, uh, if you separate the measures, I think, uh, first, um, if we consider the intertemporal poverty measures, these measures want to, uh, are sensible to the experience of poverty of the individual, but as a measure in itself, they don't formally distinguish between the transient poor and the and the chronic poor. So, but and we and we want to focus just on chronic poor. So, in, in the second category, I think uh, we can mention mention just chronic poverty. Um, and that's the one we will focus on. And within this category, you, you can further divide them, I think, in, per, in permanent income approach and the spelter approach or counting approach, and we'll be using the, the later. Um, okay. And now, uh, in, in this paper, what we're doing is we're taking uh, one of the uh, uh, multidimensional chronic poverty measure proposed just recently by Alkire, Chakrabarti, Apav, Lassa, and Janolet, Lunetsky. And uh, we're changing it a little bit, you will see. And, we're, and we're, what we're doing is we're applying uh, Shapley decomposition to it. Now, uh, well, uh, decompositions are, are vastly used to disentangle the, 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 the driving forces uh, of change in poverty. And there have there are many decompositions in the literature, but uh, broadly, um, it, sometimes the, the, the marginal impact of each factor of the decomposition sometimes is not intu the intu intuitively, it's not intu intuitively, oh, sorry. Um, and so there are some other uh, problems like Path, in, uh, path dependence, uh, and I think, and the Shapley decomposition deals with some of these problems. That's why we're taking it. Um, it also adds the, the advantage that is exact additive. So, um, before we go to the decomposition, I'll, I'll check, I'll just revise the, the index. So if we see uh, the multidimensional index as a, as a product of the head, of the head count, sensor head count, and the it's here, and the matrix of uh, of intensity of poverty, what we have in, in this index is uh, that in the head count we we have a, a dual cutoff of of dimensions and of uh, tau. So a person is considered chronically, chronically Multidimensional poor, if it's poor in more than k dimensions, more than tau times, so you need a pane of data. 
And what we have here in, in the matrix A, it's, uh, it represents the average deprivation share among the chronic poor through time. Okay. Okay. So, uh, ju just to, so when we apply the, the Shapley decomposition, what we're really doing is um, we're computing the marginal impact of each of the factors and as they are eliminated in succession and then averaging these marginal effects over all the possible elimination sequences. And when we, in one of the applications of, of this decomposition as proposed by Chirox is that we can divide, uh, we, we can have the exact additive uh, of the between group effect and the within group effect by subgroups. So that's what we have here. And the between group effect and the within group effect. Um, so now, in the within, uh, in the change in M, um, we know that uh, by construction, this index ca it can be decomposed by subgroups. So that's something that we will take in consideration. Um, so bear in mind that. Uh, and then when when we have the multidimensional, uh, uh, as we mentioned, it is the product H and A. And when we apply the Shapley decomposition, we have uh, we can decompose it to see what what portion of the change in M is due to incidence, and what portion it's due to intensity. And if we go back to the to the to the the, the previous formula. And, and we just substitute uh, by subgroups, we, we can have this broad decomposition of the demographic effect. Uh, and the within group effect, we can divide it in, the, in incidence and intensity. Um, this work uh, for the cross section was done by Roche. Um, and we're expanding it to, to, chronic, uh, to a chronic framework. Okay, so we applied this um, to uh, panel data in Argentina. This panel data uh, has a format of 2, 2, 2, which is they, they sample the, the individuals two quarters. They, they don't sample them for two, and then they sample the, the following two. So we have uh, a panel of three, of, uh, four observations during a year and a half. And just some, and we will, manage groups, um, household groups, depending on the presence of children and of uh, elderly in the household. Um, so we'll have, with the, yeah, we'll have those four, four groups. And broadly, um, the, the, uh, 2004, the, of the total multidimensional chronic poverty, uh, the household two, which is the households with only children, were the, the most deprived, but by 2012, they, they improved a lot. And in household three, which, is, which are the households that only have elder, elderly population, uh, they, uh, performed the worst. Okay, so just revising some, uh, some general, oh, the, the index in, in itself. Uh, in, in the proposition of uh, Alcure, uh, when, when they propose a multidimensional chronic poverty, they do, do it uh, with data from Chile, and, and they manage, and they use these dimensions. So for the case of Argentina, a similar country, we use the same, and same cutoffs, because just the choice of dimensions and cutoffs is a big, big task. So uh, that's what we did. Uh, notice one of the problems that we had with income um, well, we suspect that uh, there was a, a underestimation of inflation in Argentina, but we, we had a hard time finding an official measure of, of inflation. Uh, but we just, we, so someone mentioned to us that some international organizations are starting to use uh, another, uh, a private inflation index, and so we will do the exercise again with, with this inflation measure, but ju just to let you know, we, we did this all exercise 
with and without income, and although the coefficients of the results change, the order, the relative importance of the of the dimensions and groups don't change. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So th this again, general results. Um, at least uh, sixty-three percent of the population. Um, had incidence in, in poverty in at least one dimension through, but, uh, in the forward period. Um, and we, we will take the cutoff of, of three. And as you can see, w when we are talking about chronic poverty, there, the, the, the percentages are very, very low. So we'll, we'll be decomposing an already low percentage of population. So that, that's something to bear in mind. OK, so w when we apply. The decomposition, these are the, the results. Um, so uh, I, again, uh, the, uh, the, group, the household group that performed the, mo the, the best was the household group two, and the worst, the household group three. Um, OK. Uh, to see which, one, uh, which group dro drove the change, uh, as it's clear, Group household two was responsible for 77% of the total change, and household three just for the four for 4%. Four and of this change, <coughs> the we think uh, group effect was the most important. It's almost all, all of the effect was to, to, to the within group effect, as you can see, 97%. And if we further decompose, it, we see that the, the, the change was driven by incidents. And not um, not so much of uh, the intensity. And furthermore, um, by construction, when when you see the decomposition of A, and when you when you want to see the uh, the most important variables, it, it well, it's not shocking that uh, income is driving the change. Um, but and al although the overall picture is very optimistic. As you can see, it, it, it is not so much for the, for the for when you when you see the details. Um, okay, there was something else that we did as we as we have a rotating panel data, so you have in, interposed panels. So you, what you can do is you, you can through time you can you, you can follow the uh, you can do the the Shapley decomposition multiple times over time. So uh, this, is, this is comparing panel one with panel two. Uh, this is 2003, 2004, and so forth. So this is how the Shapley decomposition behaves through time, uh, how the driving forces are changing through time. And when we do that, uh, we, we see that there is, a, there is a pattern. We identify a pattern of the households. And, and we see that the household two was driving the change all the time. But when we try to identify a pattern of the indicators, it's w much, much harder to, to identify a pattern. Um, so uh, one of the, I think, uh, possible implications of this is, is that to use the household groups, it's more informative, at least for the case of Argentina and chronic poverty in Argentina. It's, to manage household groups is more informative than than analyzing indicators. Um, so these are the conclusions. Um, I think I already I said them through the, through the presentation. And yep, that would be it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.